Welcome to Big Spring Spirits in Belfont, Pennsylvania. The tasting room features subtle notes of science with hints of chemistry and biology. But behind the scenes, you'll find a bold lesson in what it takes to produce spirits like whiskey, vodka, and rum. The journey to the bottle starts with a very big bag of grain. For this batch, distillery owner Kevin Lloyd, a chemist by trade, is using rye. The purpose of the cooking step is really to extract the starch out of the grain. The hot water extracts the starch out of these grains and gets it into solution, into this water solution. Once that happens, we're gonna add enzymes to the mixture, which will attack the starch. Starch is just a big, long macromolecule repeating sugar units. So we're gonna add these enzymes that convert the starch into simple sugars, which is the fuel that our yeast can use. After about eight hours in the cooker, the stew of grain and water is ready for step number two, fermentation. This is where yeast go to work. Phil Jensen, a distiller with a PhD in plant physiology, explains. Yeast do the special thing, thankfully, <laughs> where rather than making CO, just CO2 and water, when they're deprived of oxygen during anaerobic metabolism, they actually convert that sugar into CO2 and ethanol. And then once we have uh, liquid that's maybe 10, 12% alcohol. What I want to do then is concentrate that alcohol. My goal is to, is to get the alcohol and the things that we like the taste of away from everything else. That brings us to step number three, distillation. Distillation can be broken down into two stages. The first is called the stripping run. Heat is applied to the fermented mash to separate the liquid from the solids using evaporation. The waste is removed the liquid, now about 35% alcohol, gets collected and put back into the still. Now it's time for stage two, also called the finishing run. The goal here, separate the remaining mixture into what's called heads, hearts, and tails. Heads are things that have lower boiling points than ethanol, things like methanol and acetone. We don't want those in our final product because A, they don't taste good, B, they're toxic. So the heads are bad, the hearts are good, and the tails are pretty much the leftovers. To separate them, Jensen uses something called a reflux column. What happens is the vapor goes up through the bubble cap, hits that, and then it condenses. So the liquid will actually it will go, uh, convert from a vapor phase back to a liquid phase. And then it will actually, then there's enough heat going into here that the, some molecules will revaporize. As you go up plate to plate, the amount of water gets left behind and the alcohol content gets higher and higher and higher, and there's a return here so that they, they can drain out so the water goes back to the pot. The distilled spirits make their way here, and the only way to tell when the heads end and the hearts begin is to start tasting. Almost. Once the heads pass, Jensen makes his cut, collects the hearts, and waits. You have to have a lot of patience to be a, a scientist because 95% or more of what you do is drudgery. <laughs> it's doing the same thing over and over again and being very careful, and, it, and it's kind of monotonous. But it's worth it for when you get those kind of eureka moments. It's like, ah! At this point, the hearts are more than 80% alcohol, so they're slowly blended with water to bring down the proof. Then it's off to the barrel, a tool that Jensen hopes will contain his next Eureka moment. There's a whole host of complex chemical reactions that are going on in the barrel. It's not simply um, taming the rough edges and extracting flavor from the barrel. There's a whole lot of complex chemistry that goes on, the interaction, new molecules being made, compounds being made, compounds being broken down, a little bit of oxygen gets in there, things are being oxidized. Fermentation was no problem. Distillation was pretty straightforward. Barrel aging is a big learning curve. <laughs> but at Big Spring Spirits, science is only part of the solution. We make something that we like here. We, we make it as well as we can. We hope that people will like it. And so when people come here and they're trying things and we see them having fun and, and, and giving us positive feedback, it really is a great feeling to see that.